Okay, you guys, this is uh, the Challenge 35 um, walkthrough, but this time I'm going to be using Photoshop. Now, this this is Photoshop CS2 and, um, and Null Carboni's tools, and these are, uh, that's all I'm going to be using um, in this one. So you can, uh, you can download the, um, the Photoshop CS2 from Adobe site and, uh, and then Noel's tools are like 22 bucks. So, you know, the last video was used using a $300, <clears throat> a $300 piece of software, but this one's going to literally be using, you know, 22 bucks worth of software. So, um, anyway, we'll get started. So this is the Barnard's E one hour line stack TIFF. And, uh, the first thing that we'll do is crop the edges. There's not a whole lot of movement in this particular image, um, but there is, you know, some stacking artifacts. So we just want to clean up those edges. So uh, I switch to the crop tool and um, outlined the uh, you know the image and then double click it to crop and then we'll duplicate our background layer. I call it L and C for levels and curves. Now I have this initial curve right here set up in my this even though it's in the astronomy tools. Um, this initial curve, which I actually should post this one, this as an independent action for you guys. In fact, the saturate colors and the initial curve are mine, and I, I'll put those uh, in the file section under Photoshop tips if they're not already there. But um, so anyway, uh, basically, what happens is when you go image adjust curves my starting curve I raise the black point a little bit and in Photoshop CS2 you can't you can't see the uh, the data at least I don't think you can yeah there, there's not a way to see your histogram here but um, I just kinda slice it real steep through the data like this and then um, and then sort of level level off the top something like that so that's basically what my starting curve would look like um, and I have I have that curve set up in an action so that I can just click initial curve and hit play selection and it'll show me you know it'll just sort of grab that curve and then apply it and so we'll do that once but once isn't enough this image is really dark so I'm gonna do it twice and up here in the histogram window um, I don't know if, if you do this but in my opinion you should always have this up but uh, have it on colors and you can see your red green and blue channels and you know they're really whacked out we know that it's really whacked out on this image but I'm actually not gonna fix it just yet I'm going to align them last. So, um, so that was two iterations of a pretty steep curve on this image. And then what I'm going to do is reset my, my black point. Not completely black, but we're going to go to the levels. And we're going to pull that up like that. And then I'm going to hit this initial curve again. Uh, and I'm still not going to make any adjustments to it. And that might seem like, you know overly bright and really bad but on this iteration is actually where I'm gonna fix this problem here so uh, we're gonna do it in a nonlinear fashion or excuse me in a linear fashion using levels the curves manipulates the data in a nonlinear fashion but we're just gonna move these so that they're in alignment so I'm gonna get my uh, my green channel and I'm gonna adjust the black point until the green and the blue are overlapping like that you can actually click in the box here and use your arrow keys for a little bit more granular movement there um, and then I'm gonna grab the red channel 
and do the same thing, kind of get it in the ballpark, and then use the arrow keys to kind of to kind of dial it in probably right about there. Okay, now you can see that the image is already looking better. Looks like I, I missed my red channel just a little bit. I'm gonna push that red channel to the right, excuse me, to the right a little. Um try to get them kind of pretty well balanced. So uh anyway, so that's kind of that's kind of my starting point. Um and then I'm gonna I'm gonna pop that levels open one more time and with the RG and B then I'm going to pull over the the black point maybe to about there. Alright, so <clears throat> this is my starting point. From here uh I will run the local contrast enhancement which will just sort of create a little bit of separation it'll it'll brighten those stars a touch brighter which I like I mean I know not everybody likes that but this is you know sort of my preference so um the local contrast enhancement is going to make the bright parts a tiny little bit brighter but not the brightest really it shouldn't mess with the stars too much and the dark parts just a tiny little bit darker this on this image the local contrast enhancement almost you know isn't even necessary but I don't know it's just kind of part of my workflow so I'm just gonna run it um, so when you select local haunt contrast enhancement and hit run uh, I just ran it on the levels and curves channel I'm being a little bit sloppy here but you could just go edit undo merge down and if you don't do anything after you run one of Noel's tools then he always puts it on its own layer and then merges it down so we can call this local contrast enhancement uh, because that's what that was and you can see the difference between these two is is uh is fairly subtle but effective um, what I'm gonna do next is uh, you could do this enhance DSO and reduce stars um, I'll use that sometimes uh, so you know you could run that I don't feel like this image really needs it um, because there's just not really a DSO to enhance I mean there kind of is but um, I don't know I'm just gonna uh, uh, omit it because I didn't use it and I'm trying to get my Photoshop image to look as close to my uh, Pix Insight image as possible so from here I'm just gonna do this saturate colors now this saturate colors uses uh, this is a um, an action that set up that uses Adam blocks uh, color routine where it creates um, layers and uh, and it changes the the layer to soft light changes the next layer duplicates that soft light layer changes it to luminosity and then merges those two layers uh, those three layers together your original layer the soft light layer and the luminosity layer and um, and so uh, and then I just sort of the action renames the layers and does that kind of stuff so um, Anyway, so when I push this uh, saturate colors, it creates its own saturate colors layer and performs actually Adam Block's method at 50%. So I'm going to push that a couple of times here and just kind of watch my, uh, you can see the blue halos are getting a little bluer. There's a red star right here. It's getting a little redder. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of keep going until I think that it's, it's good that's three it's definitely getting better we're getting a little bit more red in the in the nebula uh, let's see here what is this this is a fourth shot so the blues are looking better the reds are looking a little bit deeper I'm gonna see if I can do it one more time that's probably starting to push it I can see a little bit of some uh, color artifacts but you know what I'm gonna leave it right there uh, so I'm going to shift click this bottom layer so from the top hold the shift key click the bottom layer right click and choose merge layers so um, so now I've got my saturation layer my contrast layer and my levels and curves layer 
and um, and it's already getting pretty close to what my uh, to what my um, images plus one looked like. You can maybe increase the star color, but I think that that I, I don't know. I just don't. I don't think that it really needs it. But always, I mean, you can click on the stuff and play with it and just see what it does. You can just undo it, you know, if you don't like it. But um, the last thing that needs, you can see that it's a little grainy in there. So um, I am going to run the deep space noise reduction, and the deep space noise reduction, um, you know, that's the one that that performs a mask on all the white bits and only really performs the the noise reduction on the dark bits so uh, we should see a little bit of smoothing in our in our nebula which we do and the stars pretty much look the same I'm gonna uh, edit undo the merge down and call this uh, deep space noise reduction so if we kinda go look at the difference between the original levels in contrast and the s more saturated um, and denoised version this is this is pretty close to what I have uh, as my posted version in um, in Pix Insight and uh, and that's all I really did man I'd go to my uh, my image size and um, you know set it to 50 percent and you know maybe maybe you could probably get a little bit more probably a little bit more contrast in in there I think I like that just a just a touch better and um, yeah and uh, and that's it save for web post BAM now somebody might go wow well you know there's a lot more that you can do to that image and, and there probably is you know you could like isolate stars you could kinda go oh man I wanna fix this and stuff and and actually you know um, somewhere along the lines here my histogram got knocked out even though our balance looks really good here uh, you could run that free deep sky color hasta la vista green what happens what, let's see what it looks like when we do that kind of pulls some of that green out brings in probably a little bit of a of a of a, re, a more reddish look that it probably does deserve so i mean you could run that little hasta la vista green there and um and yeah in in fact let me see here if i if I put this here and I grab my other image from here so this is the image that I posted uh, this is the image that I posted online um, from Pix Insight and this is the image from Photoshop so yeah they they look they look pretty close 300 bucks here <laughs> which of course I really enjoy Pix Insight and then you know 22 bucks here so uh, so there you go that's that's the end um, I hope that was helpful and uh, I'll see you later